So I'd like to stick to this glass with my hand. Um, and it just doesn't do it. A few videos ago, I invented a suction cup that uh, does stick to various surfaces, but there's something inelegant about it because it has all these moving parts, it's clunky, it's heavy, and uh, I want to see if I could tackle doing a um, material that would stick to these. So I did some research and started making uh, various attempts. Uh, this one, uh, let's see, mm, not successful. <laughs> This other one with these like little ridges and stuff, that one, not successful. <laughs> and, uh, and then this one um, that uh, sort of simulated the lamella of gecko feet uh, is, oh, let's press it on, not successful. So uh, then eventually I did get something that sticks. But I'll also explain why it's not particularly uh, satisfactory from a um, wanting to climb on glass, climb on walls sort of perspective. So since I didn't know anything about uh, gecko feet, I had to do some research. Geckos have all these interesting scales uh, at the end of their feet. These little pads are called lamella. And they and all the little structures on them are what allow the gecko to attach to things like glass and other surfaces. If we look at the lamella, we can see that there are these little sheets that then have these hairs on top. And those hairs have more hairs on top of them. And those hairs branch out into even more hairs. And uh, these are what allow this part of the gecko to get as close as possible to the surface it's trying to connect to. And then this thing called van der Waals forces allow it to bond to the surface that it's uh, touching. And van der Waals forces are essentially when two neutral molecules are close enough to each other that they can form a bond. And it's a very weak bond, but because there are so many of these stretched across so many hairs, stretched across so many patches and across so much material of the foot, it's able to create a very strong bond to the material it's connected to. Now the question is, what have people done to make artificial gecko skin? So Thought Emporium used a uh, thin holographic film in order to uh, create an adhesive gecko skin. And that was a really cool project. Applied Science tried repeating the instructions from a, uh, from a research paper that shows how to make artificial skin, and it didn't quite work out. And Veritasium has an excellent video on how, to, uh, how this one research lab started making gecko skin. And so I delved into that, and their gecko skin is essentially a bunch of wedges. And, uh, and their wedges can then, when compressed down onto the surface, turn into these crescents that have a high contact patch of adhesion. And that allows them to get extremely strong grip. So in uh, my first experiment, I decided to uh, get inspired by the research done at Mark Kosky's lab at Stanford. And, uh, and so that was with the little wedges that, uh, I, that we saw before. And I ended up making this material. And this material is a silicone, similar to the silicone that they use. And it has a um, very small wedges in it but I did it quite differently. So when, um, when they cut their wedges, they use a, what I think is called a microtome that is essentially a ultra, ultra fine razor blade used for cutting um, things like cell samples and things when you want to cut things into the tiniest of slices. And, uh, and so I was like, can I make the cheap hacky version of this thing? Um, and that's where I ended up with uh, this mold and what you're seeing here is a 3D printed mold. And in the mold, uh, I've stacked a bunch of razor blades. And the idea is instead of taking a uh, blade, cutting wax like um, the Stanford lab did, and, uh, and then pouring the silicone onto that wax and only getting one or two pools off of the wax, I thought, what if you could make a more repeatable mold um, out of razor blades themselves? And, uh, and just by compressing them together, 
you could pour onto that and you would get all your little weight, uh, wedges from the razor blade edges uh, stacked together. And that would give us our wedges. This, uh, this material that I was then able to pull from the mold um, did not quite end up uh, that great. So let's see if we can, uh, without looking at me. Come on, camera. Well, the wedges are in there. You'll have to believe me. <laughs> and the wedges don't, uh, they don't, um, they don't aid in adhesion. <laughs> so if we take a piece of glass and, uh, and try and um, see if the, the, the material adheres or anything, it, it doesn't. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's not a particularly good uh, adhesive. And here's the frustrating thing that happened. So, of course, you should have a control when you're, uh, when you're doing an experiment, right? So my control for this experiment was to just pour some silicone into this simple square mold. And what I got out of it um, was this mold, uh, this piece. And, uh, you know, it came out of the mold. Um, and the frustrating thing is that the side that was just exposed to the air that was under the normal surface tension of a liquid uh, coming to rest, that side is fairly adhesive. <laughs> so when we take when we take the rough side that was in the mold, the, the part that touched the, uh, the, the, the rugged environment of, the, of, of this material, that part, that slides around. That slides around. It's easy to slide around. But turn it over, no sliding. No sliding. This is, this is adhering exceedingly well. So it's kind of funny when you uh, make a material, you know, and other people probably have noticed that before. That That's not particularly novel, but I didn't know about that. <laughs> and, uh, and so it ends up uh, with this experiment. The most adhesive material I made was the one I made by accident. And that was my control. <laughs> so that uh that was the conclusion of that experiment definitely a, a a failure with the weird um you know kind of silver lining in the cloud so uh now that i was defeated in making a microstructure oh now it's in focus kind of maybe does my face have to be at approximately the same distance for it to register yeah anyways <laughs> Now that I failed at making microstructures, uh, I, I didn't see any way to refine that experiment anymore. So uh, I figured I would go and pursue macrostructures to see how much they aid in adhesion. Some of the papers that I read uh, did talk about um, the importance of the rest of all those branching structures, not just the part that's touching the, the, uh, the surface at, at, at the closest point. So um, I went and made this mold uh, with all these little ridges in it. Uh, the red never shows up very well. There we go. Yeah, you can see some of it. And, uh, and then um, it resulted in this material. And this material, it's interesting, you know, so it, it's, it means that as I press down, uh, get as close as we can, uh, as I press down, those tips are going to uh, smush when I pull them in one direction or come up when I pull them in the other direction. And um, let's see if we can see that on the glass. So pushing in that direction, you can see that they go fairly flat, right? And then in the other direction, they tend to pop up. Um, so in one direction flat, in the other direction, they, they pull themselves up. And that's what's happening on the micro level in the Stanford experiments. Um, but the macro structure doesn't actually uh, 
result in any um, any extra adhesion. Uh, actually, you know, the, the surface of the back, which is just, again, uh, exposed to the normal surface tension with the air, that uh, that's that's stickier that that provides more of a uh, an actual stick to the surface which makes sense it it has um more of a contact patch at the micro level than that other structure does um and then i tried some other ones like uh these hairs here uh this comb is essentially a uh, silicone tipped uh silicone tipped hairs similar to the gecko's uh, hairs, right? And the idea is that as I pull it in one direction or the other, um, it would either adhere or not adhere. But if we look at, let's see. Well, blurry as it is, you can see that what happened is, <laughs> I wish this hadn't, um, when I dipped it into the silicone, the um, capillary action between the comb hairs um, pulled the silicone upward into it. So the actual tips uh, don't actually touch very much. Um, they don't actually have much silicone to touch uh, a surface and adhere. Um, so they just, they just sort of scratch along. And then a third one, I figured uh, what I would do is I would take the silicone that was effective, the, the, um, the one that did have uh, some adhesive properties, and put it on, in this case, this is a TPU cone. Um, so it's a soft material. And uh, when I initially built it, it had patches everywhere, but now these are the ones that remain as I uh, pulled it along surfaces, some of them came off. So I super glued each and every one of these little pieces um, onto, uh, onto this and it would adhere it it, it you know it, it provided some adhesion um, if we look you know you can see that the these patches do uh, smush down when pulled in one direction or the other um, but it was a, a fairly gross experiment like um, it, it, it needs a, a little bit more precision in the manufacturer of uh of that device so um it was just done as a last minute idea and the last experiment i did was with this one this is a um, made from a multi-part mold and what i have here are a bunch of shapes that were inspired by the gecko's lamella um, so those the pads that we can see that are visually apparent on the bottom of their feet and uh, the idea was to have a have those stick up and be the surface that's contacting, and that as they shift around on uneven surfaces, um, they can have either uh, they can have an adaptive amount of contact with the surface, and that didn't work at all. <laughs> if we if we put this on glass, it uh, um, doesn't do anything. So. We can go back to ultimately the most successful pieces were just the the pieces that um, that had you know kind of just the surface uh, surface tension exposed surfaces and yep yeah, that's it pull on that. really doesn't want to come off. Um, but of course, if you pull orthogonally, it comes right off. But in sheer, man, that does not want to go. This mess of experiments is brought to you by my patrons. Thank you to Onita Andre, Reichardt von Wolfshield, Sahaj Singh, George Hampton, Ian Johnston, and Matt Perez. Look at this. Look at this. This is all the razor blade wrappers that I had to unwrap in order to make this mold. Jeez. Thanks, everybody. And be kind to yourself.